sent them out two by two all around the world to spread the word, uh, which eventually became the gospel. Uh, as it said on this uh, audio tape, you know, they would always invoke Jesus' name and say, in Jesus' name you are healed, etc., etc. And uh, usually uh, the, the person was healed. Okay, and that was another way for them to gain converts into what was originally this Jewish Christian religion. Okay, uh, we all know from our readings that it wasn't until Paul, who originally chastised and punished the uh, Jewish Christians, had his epiphany going to Damascus, that uh he was instrumental in bringing in the non-Jews into the Christian uh, fold. Before then, they were all Jewish. And uh, there were many uh, arguments between Paul and Peter about uh, this. Um, Paul pointing out certain aspects of God's covenant with Abraham, uh, saying that, you know, adult males would not allow themselves to be circumcised because it's so painful, but they can be cleansed through baptism in the water and thus become followers. Uh, and then there were dietary questions and who should eat with whom at the table. Uh, Jewish Christians refused to eat with non-Jewish Christians. Uh, so there, were, there was uh, quite a bit of infighting, you might say. Well, then they broke apart, so. The Christians went on their way, and the Jews... Well, no, no, uh, eventually uh, it became just, you know, uh, Christianity, and there was no distinction made between Jewish and non-Jewish followers. They would just call the followers of of the Christ. And then there were the Jews. No, the Jews... Were on their own. Well, the Jewish religion yeah. remained the Jewish religion, exactly. right? Exactly. <clears throat> Those who broke away became Christians. Sure. If anybody has anything to add out there, uh, remember, our number is 516-336-8510. I want to tell you that uh, a little later this evening, we're going to have Chad the Challenger joining us for a short while. Oh, how wonderful. Discussing uh, whatever he's going to be discussing about the, the Bible and Christianity. And uh, we'll see what's going on. But let's go uh, while well, we have the time, talk a little bit about uh, What's been happening? Politics, ISIS, terror. Well, I mean... Uh, we, we haven't had a chance to talk for a while. The, world, so the world's eyes all turned to uh, Belgium and Brussels this week uh, after a horrific uh, uh, suicide bombing between two brothers, okay, and... Uh, one brother uh, blowing himself up at uh, the airport. The other brother uh, going into the uh, train station. Yeah, the subway. The subway and, yeah. and blowing himself up. Uh, you know, um, I just, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because I forgot what I, which show I had watched. It was, oh, it was NCIS Los Angeles, which was on on Mondays here in New York. Uh, the radical group, I guess it was almost like ISIS, uh, were using children as suicide bombers. They had, the, they had vests on and they had brainwashed them. These children were all orphans, and uh, they managed to get into their heads that, you know, if they do this, they will go to paradise. Uh, their parents abandoned them, didn't love them. It was just very interesting, you know, how they get into the heads of some of these followers. What would cause somebody to do this? Now, you got to say to yourself, well, this is not 
the first time in history, we can go back to World War One, uh, World War Two rather, the kamikaze pilots of Japan uh, readily sacrificed themselves in their uh, planes uh, for the emperor by crashing their planes into Navy destroyers, submarines, okay, um, and, uh, you know, having its toll on on uh, the, the war and everything. Uh, but the night before, there was a whole religious rite, okay? Uh, they knew that they would be in paradise the next day if this was to happen. And it was a great uh, embarrassment if they didn't go through with it. If something happened, then uh, they, they actually came back. Yeah. I actually shot down the ship. I didn't have to sick my, to kill myself. That's no good. Go back and kill yourself. Yeah, it's true, but... It wasn't done in the numbers that this is being done. Well, it was, but it was mainly in the toward the military. Yeah. With with uh, the suicide bombers, whether they're Al Qaeda or uh, ISIS, I mean, they're targeting civilians. You know, the more civilians they kill, the better off they. You know, they they want to get that point across, and that this is the. The, the modern warfare of the 21st century, uh, you know, that it's going to be these uh, terror attacks in various places of uh, the United States or, or Europe. Uh, they did have uh, a bunch of counter-terrorist specialists on uh, the news this week. And they said the reason, in fact, the president said it himself, the reason that Many times that is unsuccessful in the United States is because in the United States we have an integrated modern American Muslim community who are welcome into the mainstream America. They mm -hmm. don't live in ghettos. They don't live – I mean there may be cities where – like in Minnesota where there are more Muslims – than any place else, but for the most part, they live alongside of Christians, Jews. They uh, assimilate with us. They, they, yeah, they, it's exactly right. The way the way immigrants used to assimilate whenever they came over, their children, for the most part, go to American schools. They have American friends, and they consider themselves they are American. Okay, and if you know, there's they, any kind of word about something like this happening. Uh, there's always they're always they're, they're calling up, you know, the police or the military, and they're, they're giving a warning. So, you know, and in fact, I heard on the news they had the uh, commissioner of uh, counterterrorism in the NYPD, and he said since 9/11 there have been at least 20 terrorist plots that have been thwarted by the police and uh, police working in conjunction with NSA and CIA and FBI uh, that they managed to track down. And of course, you know, they don't broadcast these things. It's just that Americans know that when they get up in the morning and they go to work, they're safe. For, they can most, come, part, for the yeah. most part, they can come home. Uh, but, you know, I mean, look, they'll tell you that there's more of a chance of you going to work and falling down a flight of stairs or getting hit by a car than there is of, of uh, you know, a terrorist attack. One of the other things they were saying also, that because of uh, Muslims helping them, it's done more than anything else. And, you know, and get these uh, guys off the streets. Yet... That, Yet you see on the news, you know, one state after the other, and uh, they're mainly in uh, the southwest and in the south, where they're saying they don't want, uh, they want to restrict the uh, n the number of Muslims that come to live in their uh, in their states. They're talking about new Muslims coming in that are not vetted. They're not talking about that are no right now. 
And right now, I think everybody's beginning to agree they're going to have to start figuring out how to vet them a little bit better. Because they just said, like, uh, I think they, they, they know of about 400 uh, Muslim terrorists went into Europe. ISIS terrorists went into Europe to cause havoc. Well, and it's it, and don't forget, you know, when when uh, one of the uh, counterterrorism uh, experts said, when you have open borders, which is what you have in Europe for the most part, uh, these um, refugees can go to any part of Europe they want. They don't. They're not made to feel like they're part of the mainstream of the country. They they go to live in, you know, ghetto areas, for lack of a better word. Okay, uh, their unemployment rate is very high. Okay, uh, they're not made to feel like they're part of the French uh, country or part of uh, Belgium or Germany. And that's why they gravitate toward uh, these terrorist groups. Listen, they they you know they come in by the thousands. They have nowhere to go. There's no plan. There's no plans by the government to help them out. There's no money for them. I mean, it's it's tough. It's, it's tough on them and it's tough on the government to try to handle these people. Same thing they're arguing about over here. You know. We uh, we at least take care of them a little bit, and we actually uh, welcome illegal aliens or legal aliens or whatever you want to call them. So that's the way it is. I mean, it's, it's it's a real uh, it's a real shame what's going on. Now we'd like some calls, so why don't you somebody call us up? Also, I guess I uh, call us up at 516-336-8510, and I forgot to open up the chat rooms. So maybe I should open up the chat rooms and see what's going on, because I see there's the people trying to get me in the chat room. And... Uh, yeah, I see we have somebody in the chat room now. And again, as I said, if anybody wants to listen and wants to call in, call in, but call it the 516 number. It would be nice to hear from you. Again, we like to hear from everybody. We're going to also... Uh, we're also going to play a little bit of uh, I plug his music today, which we normally don't do. But not, not that we, I should say which we normally do, but we haven't been doing lately because of uh, not running the show, obviously. And But I'm going to go ahead and uh, play one song that I uh, really enjoyed listening to a while ago. You may have heard it before. The singer's name is Stephen Williams and the uh, Most Wanted Band from the United Kingdom. Let's hear this song. It's really cute. Not everybody's going to enjoy it, but I do. Well, you know you got good reason to be so mad at me. You know I've been so low Crawling off from everyone's feet Yeah, we know I'm gonna save myself Never gonna do it again Oh, baby Take me back in your arms once again 